Today, we are going to revisit the life of one of the most famous, successful, and influential figures in art history. He was and could still be the archetype of a misunderstood man. Vincent was born in the Netherlands to Theodorus and Cornelia van Gogh in 1853. Being the second child of the family, he was given the same name as his older brother, who passed away before birth. His interest in art began right at childhood, he began to draw encouraged by his mother, and when he was 20 years old he took up work as an art dealer. After around two years of working, he was dismissed. Art became his only outlet. Through art, he managed to express his feelings, comments and hopes. His paintings were paired with his letters that usually were written to his brother. He now tried to supply teaching and preaching, but he was earning very little money, so little he had to rely on his younger brother, Theo, to survive. Vincent started off his artistic career by producing only drawings and detailed sketches. Later on he made his first oil painting. Beach at Scheveningen in stormy weather. In 1883 he moved to northeast Holland, where he began producing several works of art. The paintings he did in this time captured the depicted worker. He painted peasants, weavers and coal miners. This underlined Van Gogh's admiration to hard and self-sufficient workers, as well as his aversion to industrialization and technology. In the new world that was being born, humans were nothing more than a mere machine, and Vincent cared so much about individuality and individual expression. His paintings had a certain aesthetic that probably came from his solidarity with the poor. His stage in Holland produced very dark and gloomy paintings, using a very reduced color palette. Due to his father's death and several problems in the village where he lived, he decided to leave in 1885. His departure from Holland meant not only a change in his personal circumstances, but also a thematic change in his work. With his departure, the first stage of his life began. In Paris he distanced himself from religion and socialism, two things that had ruled his life up to this moment. Now, his exclusive religion was art. Here, in his new stage, we notice an abandonment of the depressive representations of peasants and gloomy world. In Paris we notice the use of more vibrant colors, more blues and reds. Not as dark as it was in Holland, both in color and significance, he was absolutely repelled by classical beauty. Some say that this change happened because he found love, but there is nothing that confirms that. As he did in the past, Vincent defended the individuality of art. And one of the first paintings he did in Paris was Still Life with Mackerels and Lemons and Tomatoes, where we appreciate an increase in the number of colors used, reds, greens, blues, abandoning the gloomy world he captured in Holland. Even though his stay in Paris was extremely educational, he decided to move to the south, to Arles, where nature, he considered, was friendlier. Like this, his second stage as an artist began in 1888. His stay in this southern French city only lasted about a year, but he created over 200 paintings. Some consider his stay to have been of a very deep isolation. Unlike Paris, which was the capital of art, Arles had very little presence of artists, which allowed Vincent to have a bigger artistic freedom. This city was full of nature, of light and color. In this second stage we'll find an explosion of color, especially yellow. From Paris, he brought the Japanese influence of his art. And during his first months in Arles, he painted the most typical Japanese motifs, like the pink peach tree and blossom. Vincent's use of color now did not correspond to reality. He used color to express himself and his individuality. He portrayed what he saw, not what he imagined, but he altered the colors to fit his individuality and to strengthen the nature of expression. He also began making portraits as he did in the past. And the first portrait he did in Arles was of an Algerian infantry soldier, the seated Zalve. However, one of the colors he used the most during his stay in Arles was the color yellow. 
There have been a lot of false rumors saying he used to drink yellow paint in order to cure himself, in order to feel happiness on the inside. Given the fact that yellow is a color usually used to represent happiness and joy. Having studied different theories as to why he used so much yellow, it is almost clear that the explanation is because he simply liked the color. Not only can we guess it by looking at the paintings, we can also see how yellow is the color he mentioned the most in his letters to Theo, his brother. In Arles he became really close with Paul Gauguin, their relationship was complicated to say the least. But the obvious thing was that Vincent admired Gauguin too much. At some point, they even shared a studio, and they were going to use Vincent's yellow house to decorate it. However, the Arles tragedy started, which was the start point of Vincent's breakdown. Gauguin never really valued Vincent highly as an artist, for him he was just a way to achieve his goals. Moreover, he also felt the two brothers Vincent and Theo were trying to make him less of a valuable artist. Soon enough, Gauguin left the studio he was sharing with Vincent, and everything went to hell for the Dutch artist. His entire dream shattered right before his eyes, a wave of loneliness hit him so hard he captured it by painting his chair and Gauguin's, Vincent's chair with his pipe and Paul Gauguin's armchair. However, Gauguin hesitated to leave Arles because of Vincent's illness. On the 23rd of December, Vincent followed Gauguin out for a walk, and when he got back to the studio he cut off part of his ear using a razor blade, the reason why is still unknown, there are many theories to why he did it, but none of them has any solid ground. It could very much be the conversation he had with Gauguin that led him to do this to himself. But again we simply do not know. At last, Gauguin had found an excuse to finally leave Arles. Vincent was admitted into the village's hospital, his mental illness had only gotten worse, some signs of persecution mania appeared, and he suffered several hallucinations. Against all things, he continued painting, but he isolated himself completely. Finally, in 1889, a year later after he arrived in Arles, he moved to saint rémy de provence where he would paint his best-known painting. This incurable illness was ruining his life. The citizens of Arles wanted to keep him away from everyone. His future was completely destroyed. Close to St. Remy, Vincent spent a year in an asylum. He was diagnosed with epileptic fits. During these epileptic attacks, he became violent and suffered hallucinations, which meant that during this time he could not perform basic tasks such as writing and painting. However, whenever he felt better, he was allowed to walk through the surrounding areas and paint. It was during his stay in St. Remy when nature became his thematic preference. Painting connected him with life and nature received his total dedication. In 1889. He had a huge epileptic attack that was followed by a deep period of depression. He was suicidal and had terrible hallucinations. Since my illness I sense a terrible loneliness even in the open air, so I don't dare to go outside," said Vincent. He did not step out of his room for six weeks, and he began fearing his fellow inmates. This fear was captured in his paintings through the color choices. What used to be a lot of yellows suddenly became a lot of toned-down colors and dark harmonies, with harsh, stormy and convulsive brush strokes. Starry Night is one of his major artworks, but it is also one of his strangest. He was not capturing nature as it was, he wasn't portraying a direct observation of nature, he was now evoking everything from his imagination in order to portray a particular atmosphere through colors and shapes. It was during his stay in the asylum when an art magazine included an article about him. He managed to show a few of his paintings and, most importantly, he managed to sell one of them. Against popular belief, he did not only sell one painting during his lifetime, although he didn't sell a lot. After these events, he suffered one attack, bigger and longer than any other, and he decided to finally leave the asylum in St. Remy. In 1890 he went back north, near Paris, to a little town called auvers sur oise where he immediately began to paint again. During his stay in Auvers, 
painting became his therapy, it was when working that Van Gogh could forget about his illness. A nervous energy reappeared in his paintings, in Arles, the colors took prominence in his paintings, now, it was the brush strokes. Things were going well, he was painting, and he developed a nice friendship with the town's doctor, Dr. Gachet. Vincent's work was keeping him alive. However, everything began to fail quickly, his relationship with Dr. Gachet came to an end, and Theo, Vincent's main financial help, was having problems of his own. Vincent felt he had failed in life, he lost his hope of work. He had nothing keeping him alive anymore. Attacks were recurrent now, and it sounded the alarm for his final madness. On July 27, 1890, he went into a field and shot himself in the chest with a revolver, and he died two days later in his room in the inn. In the end, Vincent loved art, the world, and life, but his love was not returned. But despite everything, he managed to create his own world through colors and shapes, a world that could never destroy him like the real world did, and it wasn't until the beginning of the new century when his art started to gain the recognition it deserved. In 1905, for example, there were a lot of expositions that included a very big amount of his paintings. A lot of young artists began to say Vincent was their teacher and role model. Every city began buying his works, and he became one of the biggest artists in history. Nowadays, he is one of the most loved painters, not only because of his meaningful art, but also because of how misunderstood he was all his life. Because of his mental illness, people loved him and still love him because of his huge misfortune as an artist.